I think it's interesting, you know, I, I do think about this because people ask me, and I think it was by chance that I came across this. Um, I, when I qualified, I was working in a health service environment. So it was very much controlled what we were doing, what you were offering patients. But um, I came across a company. Uh, so I got into things like quality of gold using gold restorations. But then I came across a company called Metalor, which used to allergy test their alloys. And I thought that's really interesting because as a dentist, I'm the person that's actually placing that yeah. material into that patient's mouth. The patient is trusting me to make that decision. But yet I don't actually know what's in that product. Mm -hmm. And so really it's my responsibility. So the more I delved into it, I realized, you know, there's so many different alloys that you can use. And I think also in my journey that went on to things like amalgam, you know, as well. So we were using amalgam as part of the health service. That's a very normal product. Yeah. And the argument is that it's been out for 130 years. So it's very safe. But if you think about it, 50% of that product is mercury. And they're saying once it's set, it's stable. But the environment that we're putting it in has crushing forces in milliseconds. We have extremes of hot and cold. Yeah. We have strong acids. We have alkalis. Anything that you put into that kind of environment has to perish. A car wouldn't survive that kind of environment. So how could an amalgam restoration not change? So, you know, that that kind of got me thinking, you know, is this the right thing to be using? So I started looking at composite based products. But look, the most natural thing is no dentistry. So if you if you have no dentistry, that's the best we can do. But if we have to have dentistry, we really need to look at products which are as biocompatible as possible. So I think even with implants, um, titanium has been out for a long time. Yeah, maybe the initial products were very good, but it's like anything when it comes out, people start to find ways to make things cheaper, make it more affordable for everybody. Things are cut out. Sometimes we don't even understand why they've been cut out, but then we find out later on it has an impact on people's health. So you'll see some of the cheaper implants. They have alloys of aluminium, vanadium, titanium. Yeah. We don't know what that does to your body. We know aluminium is really bad for you, but as an alloy, you're putting it into bone. It's constantly in um, contact with blood products. What is it actually doing to your body? Is our job as a dentist to fix people's teeth or is it to help them as part of their health journey? And I see that, you know, it's a multidisciplinary approach that we have. As a, another medical professional, you know, we have one step that we need, to, that box that we need to tick, but we need to look at that person's overall health as well. And this is why really I got into biocompatibility.